Hello everyone and welcome to a video I decided to do showing you guys um, Victoria 2 A House Divided. Uh, this I got this from my uh, deal with Paradox Interactive so I, uh, I'm just going to show this off to you. This is not the beginning of a campaign but I just wanted to show you guys what it's like playing through with the 1861 start date as a confederacy winning the civil war here and if I do decide to make a confederate campaign I guess I, you know I'll, I'll save this game so I can start making episodes you know starting after the civil war ends in a confederate victory alright so right away we're gonna choose research I'll go with idealism because I want those research points now let me just show you guys some map modes before I start um, so the new ones are RGO output, which is basically like, uh, you know, um, you click on one thing and it, you know, it shows you in green everything else that does that same thing. So it's kind of useful though, because now you can, you know, see dyes. These are the ones that make dyes. Yeah. Which is uh, probably the rarest resource in the game, I think. Sulfur is also pretty rare. Um, Alright. But there's also population density, which is done on a scale relative to just that one country. So um, Nashville, Tennessee looks really densely populated, but it's only 144,000. New York actually has, you know, a good amount. But uh, then you go over here to, to China, you know, and these have tons of people. And you go to, to like, Africa, and, uh, you know, uh, that's actually a... Not a good example, but you you know you go right here, and it's not that many people. We also have nationality, just like a pop map mode. You can you know see the nationalities of the people in every province, kind of self-explanatory. Spheres of influence, yeah yeah. Supply limit, party loyalty has to do with you know voting, where uh, you know these provinces regularly cast their votes for ranking that's the go the world ranking thing showing you know Britain number one so they're the most green you have the you know worst ones are darker red migration sh shows like immigration immigration yeah civilization level civilized different shades are civilizing and then red is totally uncivilized or no gray is totally uncivilized red is unowned you can also see the colonies here. Relation map mode. Okay, so they, that's all. Now, for the war. First, let me use my, na my national focus. Um, usually, I found it's a good idea to, um, you know, start with uh, selecting capitalists. So I'm going to do that in Tennessee, and um, I like to do it where, the, where there are dense populations. Uh, Atlanta is a good city for that. So, you know, we have have some good ones here so I will encourage capitalists in those two and you can see it comes up here now uh, so that's good and what else are we gonna do we're going to mobilize our draft here actually I, I wish I hadn't done that yeah whatever um, so we have to assemble an army here I'm going to assemble another army in Little Rock Then with uh, these guys, they can stay there. So I'm just sending my men around, you know, to different places. And I found that budget often, oftentimes is kind of tough in the beginning of the games. Um, so we are going to probably rack up a pretty big debt. Uh, actually, you know, I'm just going to tear my way out of this. <laughs> 25%, but if you're a smaller country, it's it's very difficult to get out of just by doing something like that. Ooh, we get a military parade. And I'll do that. Militancy is kind of useful because it helps you pass uh, social reforms earlier. We have a small navy here in Savannah, Georgia, but I'm not going to touch that right now. All right. Um, so those guys are coming together. Now what I'm going to do, actually, is another thing they added is this... Uh, not guards, because guards are too hard to build. 
but you can build as like the max possible infantry at one time just by clicking this button uh, but it would cost a lot of money so I'm just gonna start recruiting some Texans yeah I get 10 infantry and that'll help me out um, yeah So right now we see um, that the Yankees are mounting kind of an invasion here of my land. And no leader, that's kind of bad, but it, this guy will get here first and he'll... Stuart will uh, be the general of that battle. So right now we're just kind of throwing men in here. Um, actually going to keep these guys out of it because they didn't pour in that army of, um, of 26,000 like I thought they would so of course we won easy now I'm going to take this Robert E. Lee's army of Northern Virginia here and the army of the Shenandoah I'm gonna bring them down into rally because rally whatever um, because you know farmland versus mountains it's better to keep the armies in the farmland for attrition reasons okay now they're also invading here Nashville um, obviously not going to let them take it. You can uh, win this war as the Confederacy just by uh, defending. It's pretty easy if you just hit back their armies a couple of times they'll give up unless they make you know significant gains or something like that but it's not that hard to do. Not what I meant. Whoops. Um, so we're going to have to send in this army of 26,000 to support because they um, have more men than I thought they would have. Okay, so we won the Battle of Nashville, though, which is good for me. But I see they have an army of 39,000 coming down, which is more than I can take care of with my 27, especially with no leader. Let's look at my, my generals, see how many I... I only have three generals actually I'll probably get more as the war goes on but um you know I can beat the Union pretty fast so I practiced it a couple times okay so we've won yeah it's um, we've won there so send these guys in but they actually won the battle before I even needed them and look at that KD I don't know why but it just seems even when I play as the Confederates just throwing my troops around I win um, you know, with really good KD ratios, so that's that's nice that uh, Robert E. Lee was able to help me like that. But now we'll send in these this army um, to the mountains there, and with the Army of Northern Virginia, we're gonna just help out in Manassas. Okay, so got lots of men coming through Kansas. Um, See, again, killed a lot more than we lost. Not totally sure why that is. Oh, my eyes are itchy. I don't know why. Ugh. Ow. <laughs> Sorry about that, but... Your eyes itch, they itch. Anyway, um... So we're building a small arms factory, so let's just look at, um... So we were, our capitalists are helping us build things here. And now I think these are, um... Let me just get a calculator real quick, because I think that might be how much they make in a year, given the current, um... profit in one day. So, seven point... No. No. So I don't actually know what this 17.39k is. I don't know what that number is because this factory, um, you know, see, it's making 7.5 pounds as the last day's profit. Um, and if we multiply that out by a year, it's about like 2,750 pounds. So I don't know what that number actually means. I could probably look it up.
Oof. Yeah, our little army got caught there. Right, time to clear him out of Oklahoma. And how long till our... So our, our infantry coming up from this area should be done kind of soon. Oh no, you wait. See, look at that. That's good. Okay, now the problem here is... Um, they're really invading Tennessee. And I'm gonna need, um... Some guys to help... Kick them out of there. So we're gonna take back Tennessee here and um, send these you know these little troops here to Houston look at that so we're slaughtering them out in Oklahoma and uh, these guys can go no actually we're all gonna go take back Oklahoma City first team up against those 32,000 yeah no chance oh, even though they reinforced so, victory, defeat, uh, that was because they kill spawned. They spawned killed, I mean. Um, big victory. So they just you killed one of my units that popped up, brand new. Which is kind of annoying. And cheap, on their part. But no one ever said the Yankees would play fair, isn't that right? Yeah, they did it again. Can't really stop them, though. Yeah. Luckily, though, it looks like they're not going to um, capture anything. Yep. Because I've kicked them out. I thought they would, might be able to capture Nashville if my time ran out. But I was able to force them out of there. Oh, that's so annoying that they're back here in Oklahoma City. Oh, no, they're still, they're still retreating. Send these guys to Dallas, though. See, not even close. Oh, Virginia is being invaded, though, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, so let's kick them out of the mountains here and then take that back. Woo. Lost 212, but we killed 9,056 here in Hot Springs. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. Didn't freeze. Send these guys up to Taliqua. Omaha City. Actually, are they... These guys are invading. They're splitting up. The smaller army is going here. The bigger one is going... Sorry. The bigger one... is going over here. Actually... Yeah. Annoying. Let's look at the war score here. This is all, there's a thing called war justification, which I might explain later. Anyway, see, we're winning. And at any time when they accept status quo, I'll just offer it to them. Because I, um... Actually, let me see something. Yeah, I can't add any, you know, I can't take states in this war. And one thing is that, you know, I don't actually have cores on Missouri and Kentucky and stuff like that. It's just what I have now. Um, so there's no... There's not going to be any branch of ism to, to target the Union after this. If I take states, it's just out of greed. It's not because I have cores on them. Alright, let's look at that.
not what I told them to do. See, we're um, running up a little debt here, which I find happens a lot more in a house divided. Let's get rid of this uh, building construction. I don't care about those radio. I mean, I do care about the railroads. I won't say I don't, but 30,000 men going here. Gotta stop them. I don't know how these 2,000 ended up in Vicksburg, but we'll kill them. More guys out here. Oh, hey, I forgot about these guys. Um, so they'll go over here. About 26,000 in Oklahoma City. Look at that, that's almost 10 to 1. In Memphis. Now um, we're kind of struggling here a little bit, so I'm gonna send send these 21,000 from the south in from Texas. We'll go get them. Actually, they didn't need it. We still won the battle, not wi not by you know a very wide margin, but a win is a win. He lost Manassas. Just chasing my armies down here, but we have this 26,000 man army that just can kill whatever the Union has. And maybe they're ready to lose. Nope, they're still not ready for status quo. I'm um, actually just sending the 33,000. They're losing so many men. I need to come in and help them out here. Didn't work out. So I was not able to make it there in time. Um, we can send these 21 over, uh, I'm gonna send them over here to North Carolina, where they can just kind of defend. I don't want to have any logistics issues there, though. So, at this point, we are about a year into the war, and we've kind of pushed back every offensive the Union has been able to, damn it, to launch, except for this one, I guess, which is currently being pushed back. It's just I only have one big army over here, so it's kind of tough. But, well, now I have two. Sweet, I'm a great power now. A lot of that, though, is because of my military. Um, military score seems to go up when you you go at war. Not totally sure why that is, considering it's more of a potential than... I, at least that's what they say. It's more of a potential military capability than what you actually have. Um, but anyway, I expect to go down to about 7. 7th best in the world after this. After the Civil War ends. because my military score is going to decrease. Knoxville. Maybe after I kill 
these couple armies, they'll be ready to lose the war. I don't want them to cut through Missouri though, because I will lose men if they probably use men lose men if they go through the southern part there. Another great victory. Give up, Yanks. They would accept. Okay. So there's no reason for me to keep going on in this war, except I guess, you know, to kill Yankees or something. Um but that's not really achieving anything for us. So I will accept this peace offer. I mean, well, I mean, I will send the peace offer. And they accept. I will demobilize now. And there we've done it. We've freed the South. Nice bunch of slave states for you to determine their own future. Um, I have nothing in my sphere of influence, though. Um, so let's just, I'm not going to keep playing, but just to show you guys where you could take the Confederacy after winning the Civil War. Um, in a house divided, it, the way war works is, and this is what I mentioned earlier, not what I meant to do, is let's say, um, no, say I wanted to declare war on Mexico, I can't just do that. I have to justify it first, which, uh, um, it requires some time to make a Casas Belli, and at some point in it, I think you'll almost definitely get discovered by the other country, and you'll get some infamy. How far you are in the process, though, of making the Casas Belli determines how much infamy, infamy you get. So, like, uh, taking a state, the Casas Belli for that would be 11, if you got discovered right away, but chances are, you know, that's not going to happen. So it's actually, um easier now to start a bunch of wars than it was in just vanilla Victoria 2. Um, which means you can, um, uh, might you want to do some conquering in Mexico? Take these, um, you could basically take a lot of Mexico, actually. Which is good, because it's got some, some resources. Um, uh, I think a lot of times, yeah, see, gold gets discovered here. There's lots of gold. In Mexico, um, so just look at gold in the world. Yeah, so actually, Mexico has the most concentrated amounts of gold in the whole world. It looks like three regions really close together. Actually, no, no, no. I take that back. Um, yeah, this is pretty good too, though. Over here. Um, but anyway, so you might want to take some of uh, Mexico's land, because they're pretty weak. Just make sure the United States doesn't sphere them and then kind of overpower you. But that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will save this game in case I decide to make a Let's Play of it later. This will just turn into Episode 1, I guess. So, you know, if I start a Let's Play, we'll just start off at 2, come back and watch this as your Episode 1. And we'll just start in 1862. Thanks for watching.